Generative AI is a big category of different artificial intelligence applications which generate some kind of a content. So for example, that can generate images, that can generate text, marketing copy, generate presentations, generate uh, from scripts, the whole videos, stuff like that in general. And it's on the rise thanks to the chat GPT, uh, thanks to the efforts from OpenAI on DALI, on GPT-3. So I'm going to cover most of the startups based on Base 10 VC, uh, this cool uh, landscape that you can see right now. The link is down below in the description. I love this domain. I think generative AI definitely will be the future uh, because it will allow human to, humans to be super powered with different AI uh, capabilities and basically will be able just to think about the concepts and then quickly see the draft of that. That goes for text, that goes for images, that will help uh, programmers, that will help artists, that will help all the creative people trying to create new content, trying to try different stuff and see how it works. Uh, this using AI will be much faster and in the end will be kind of a curators of the content because again, what really matters is how, how to pose the questions to the natural language uh, processors, what kind of images you want to be drawn, what kind of scripts you want to be written, uh, stuff that basically means that you have to create content for other humans so that it's really interesting. So let's get started. So first of all, you have the general platforms here uh, and there's OpenAI with all its models, but also there's this open source hugging face, which I really like, and a bunch of other companies that are doing exactly that. So they provide the whole model. So for example, if you want to develop your own application on top of one of the AI models, then go for the platform section and see what they offer because you can basically use the API from that in your own application. Then there's a bunch of... Um, components related to creative organization. So using AI to basically uh, organize how you write notes or, may, or maybe uh, how you organize uh, your data within the company. Synthetic data generation, that's mostly, uh, the idea is that uh, there are different domains uh, of business. So for example, healthcare is one of them where it's really hard to come by uh, with the data and usually, especially data for training machine learning models, you need to have a lot of them. So usually the solution is try to guess the distribution and then generate synthetic data to, uh, to use that for training models. And those startups are doing that. Uh, really cool uh, stuff also. Uh, vector search and curation. Uh, this is this, the couple of companies doing that. Uh, then we have something which is much more uh, customer facing. So customer support is of course one thing and there are already startups doing that for uh, probably already spoken with a bunch of chatbots uh, trying to uh, solve your issue. So that's working already pretty good. Uh, also marketing and sales copy. You probably have heard of uh, Copy AI and Jasper. All of those, I think those are the biggest ones with the, the biggest rounds recently, but there's the whole category of uh, marketing and sales copy. A really big category. Uh, Contentize, my previous company, was uh, in that, uh, in that uh, pool as well. Uh, so this is really big. There are a lot of interest because generally speaking marketers and uh, bloggers need a lot of content to be able to distinguish themselves or high quality content as well so any kind of help in that especially producing content at scale product descriptions this is a really big thing uh, going back it's there's a code generation and i really like this category especially playing around with chat gpt you can see my video uh the, the, that was the previous video on the channel uh, Basically, code generation means that you get you become a super powered coder. So you can ask things like, write me a Keras code for a particular machine learning model and you get the whole code. ChatGPT can already do that, but there are a bunch of startups that uh, are focusing especially on that. I think the biggest from those are Tab9, from what I heard, uh, and I think Codepilot this is the one I heard also about. Uh, and they're really doing a great job because you can really quickly 
uh, get a draft of your code. Of course, it's not perfect. Maybe uh, it will contain some uh, errors, but you get at least the structure that you can work on. So if you have like lack of ideas or you want to start quickly, this is a really great idea to start. Uh, general writing and content editing, this is similar, similar to marketing and sales copy. Also, those things are basically based on those large language models like GPT-3, but uh, there's a bunch of other competitors uh, I was talking about coming from Google, coming from, uh, coming from other companies as well. Uh, Quillbot, other side, language tool, Wartune, uh, all of them are trying to make the work of a writer or a journalist much easier and much faster. Uh, text and data summarization, those are prim primarily focusing on uh, scientific applications or uh, also for the work of uh, journalists or researchers, research analysts, uh, which needs to go through a lot of papers or a lot of data to have some kind of understanding. So this is also big in finance because uh, people want to know what's going on with the market. You have many news coming from Bloomberg, coming from other sources as well, plus the, the data coming from, from the markets themselves. So you want to summarize that uh, and text and data summarization is the name of the game here. Again, there is a category called image editing. So DALI 2 is probably the best model when it comes to right now to generating uh, images, but there's also stable diffusion and um, mid journey. Uh, both of them are generating images. Uh, those startups here are using uh, a little bit of different techniques to actually allow you to edit images, not generate them. I think there's no genera generate uh, uh, images category no there's not so yeah so you have DALI stable diffusion and mid journey uh, in the category of uh, image generation actually uh, which I really like I mean I, I really like playing around with what's possible to create with your pure imagination and then writing stuff like uh, generate me a pixel art of uh, the, the new new car or something like that and you get this amazing image uh, stuff like that uh, there's a bunch of uh, gen general categories for uh, around images, also for creating images for a particular reason like ads or design. Uh, th th this is really great. Uh, so going also from text to image. So this is what I mentioned with Dali Midjourney. Midjourney is actually mentioned here at Crayon. Uh, and there's a bunch of other uh, like uh, stable diffusion I mentioned. Uh, startups doing exactly that. Uh, there's the whole also applications with text to speech and speech to text. Uh, I think what's not mentioned is the recent model from OpenAI um, called uh, Whisper, which is probably the state of the art right now. Uh, they did speech to text, which allows you to uh, go from, you can transcript all the text at, the, uh, at really high quality level, which is really great. For the music generation, uh, a bunch of startups, uh, plus there's models coming from DeepMind, WaveNet. Uh, they, they were probably the top of the game a couple of years ago. I think there are like new versions of that right now. And there's a bunch of startups doing music generation. So for example, if you're using for music for your YouTube channel or for different marketing materials uh, or, or for running a cafe, this is probably the best way because this way you can generate free of costs any kind of music that you can use uh, in your content without worrying about uh, potential takedowns or potential copyright infringements and stuff like that. So this is music generation will definitely be big uh, for, again, for, for music in shops, for music uh, that you want to use in your content or marketing pitches, stuff like that. Uh, audio editing is expanding on that. So there's, for example, uh, you can audio, uh, edit automatically audio uh, if you have any kind of a noise, uh, noise cancellation cancellation is big, and trying to uh, take the take take the real talk out of the out of the um, uh, recording. This is interesting. Summarization and insights. This is pretty much interesting to text and data summarization. So I won't go into that. Um, avatars and dubbing. So I, I mentioned already Synthesia in my other video. I really like this category. So basically this whole category is about creating videos together with the next category, creating videos from scripts. So basically you provide a script which can actually come from GPT-3 and similar models or ChatGPT, and you want to have a presentation that's entirely recorded for you with AI head talking, AI voice and stuff like that. And this is really great. This is still not the perfect one, 
at least not in all the use cases, but it's already really good if you want to have uh, this generic AI avatar, for example, talking about uh, topics like real estate, talking about different marketing stuff. Uh, this is really good. Uh, the way the category, the, the, the future it's going to, to, to go to is having your own custom avatar with your own custom voice so you can really delegate all the tasks so for example i wouldn't have to record this video i would just uh, have pr provide the script for the video and have my own hat with my own voice talk to you through the video this is a really amazing future because it will free up so much time and basically will allow you to again focus on the creative side and what you want to say instead of going through uh, task of actually recording, making sure that everything works properly. This will really uh, be a game changer here. And I really like this category. Uh, yeah, so videos. So yeah, this is it for the, for the short summarization. I will provide the link down below. Generally speaking, I love this generative AI category. I think more and more people are uh, really getting excited about it. And it happens with every kind of new uh, development recently that was chat GPT uh, but we had DALI and many people's testing DALI I think it's still the very beginning as those kind of machine learning models will get better we get more applications and I think the name of the game right now is to figure out the best cons consumer facing applications because all those models are cool however uh, how do you make money on that of course OpenAI will make money on the I api access if you have just if you provide just the the api access and uh, you you have to pay for that however what are really the killer applications for generative ai we're still trying to figure that out uh, it's not clear uh, because there are still too many errors along the way but for example, there are a lot of things to be done in the search engine. Actually, this kind of generative AI, when it comes to language, is probably what might disrupt Google to a certain extent, because already some of the answers provided by ChatGPT are better than what, what Google is providing through search, uh, because in the end, people want answers uh, to, the, to, to the questions. Uh, so this is an interesting topic. But definitely, we're right now entering this phase of trying to find applications for different generative AI models. And the best applications and the one that will bring revenue uh, will win in the end. So uh, definitely, if you have ideas for uh, applications, try to go for it. Uh, of what I heard, VC, VC investors are really open to, to generative AI right now. And probably there will be a lot of things happening around that. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more AI, AI tech news and see you in the next video.